Well, Bunny. Yes. It is time once again for us to open up our history books and get our learn on <laughs> with another intellectually unintellectual installment of Steve's Historical Approximations. All right. So this is a semi-quasi-fairly regular-ish segment here on the Pope on Film podcast where I get a fairly unknown segment of history and I rework it so that I can tell the story in my own voice. So it's not exactly 100% honest to wood accurate. I like putting a lot of uh, quotes into people's mouths. So it's not 100% accurate. It's more like 94 to 98% actual factual. It's very highly accurate, just not 100%. This week, this week, we are uncovering a bizarre conspiracy theory in American society that has to do with rednecks, Ford cars, uh -huh. racism, my PE class in high school, and dancing. Oh. But, Bunny. Yes. Before we get to that. I got, I got a fun way to start this off. Bunny, yes. it's trivia time! Okay. I've got a series of questions for you, Bunny, okay? All right. Got a series of questions for you. Most of them are pretty easy. Bunny. Yes. <clears throat> you live in what state? All right, wait a second. The state of insanity. Yeah, the state of confusion. I'm going okay. with the seed of confusion. Yes, thank you. Okay. I actually have that written down. I, I, I have written down here Colorado, but I will also accept confusion. So okay. I, that is what I wrote down here. So you are correct, sir. I, I, can, I can validate that. You are correct, <laughs> sir. So I have a few more questions for you. What is Colorado's state capital? Uh, oh, fuck. Is it Denver or is it Boulder? Denver. I don't know. Okay, you're, you're I don't answering question with a question. I don't know. I'm going to go with Denver. Yes, you are right. Okay. Colorado state capital is Denver. Here's another question for you. What is Colorado's official state nickname? Hmm. Um. Well, the new one is Puff Puff Pass. Right. I don't know what the old one was. Um, the Centennial State. Ah, uh, because it because it was the hundredth state. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have no idea what's happening. So here's an easy one. Here's an easy one for you. Okay, okay. the the Colorado State nickname. That's a difficult one. Here's an easy one, Bunny. Yes. What is your, what is your state bird? Um, it is the vulture. What? Come on, Bunny. Everybody knows that Colorado State Bird is the Lark Bunting, a oh. medium-sized sparrow that is native to Central and Western North America. Jesus Christ, if Wikipedia was a person, I would hit that. Because I just love Wikipedia so much. Yeah. It has given me so much love. Maybe one day I should actually read their pleas for donations instead of just immediately clicking them away. <laughs> So I have one more question for you, Bunny. Yes. One more question. What is the official Colorado State Dance? Oh, that would be the mashed potato? No. No, it is not the mashed potato. Do you have any other guesses, Bunny? Uh, it is French Apache dancing? No. No. It is not French Apache dancing. Let me tell you what Colorado's official state dance is. What is it? Square dancing, bunny! Oh my god. They do Isn't, that it shit odd? Here? Isn't it odd that Colorado's state dance is freaking square dancing? Yes. I see. I would have imagined that the official state dance of Colorado would be swaying and nodding to the music of fish. <laughs> mm 
-hmm. But that's just me, I guess. That's just me. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I live in Oklahoma. And uh, here's some trivia about Oklahoma for you. We're ranked 46th in median household income. So uh, our, so that, that means that there's a lot of angry, poor white people on opioids to worry about. So, yay! Now, the Oklahoma state capital, that's easy. That's Billy Ray's shed in Meeker. <laughs> Billy Ray's shed in Meeker is actually the state capital. Yeah. State nickname, that one's an easy one. Oklahoma is called the Jews Will Not Replace Us State. <laughs> the state bird of Oklahoma, is, that one That one is, is an easy one. The Gay Beating Finch. <laughs> okay. And the, do you know what the official dance is of Oklahoma, buddy? Um, no. Square dancing, buddy! <laughs> See what's going on here? Do you see where I'm going? Yeah. The state dance: Alabama, Arkansas, Connecticut, Georgia, Illinois, New Jersey, Utah, all square dancing. Really? In fact, in fact, out of all the states, only 30 of them have an officially recognized state dance. And of those 30 states, 24 states either have square dancing as their official dance or have square dancing as one of their official dances. And there's, the a, there's a few lie. Yeah, uh, California's official dance is the West Coast Swing with square dancing being recognized as their official folk dance. There's a few like that. Um, but while we're on the subject of, of a state dance of going beyond square dancing, South Carolina has an official state waltz. Ooh. Ooh. Why don't you get the stick out of your ass, South Carolina? Uh, uh, hoity, hoity, toity. Yeah. There. Kentucky and North Carolina both like clogging. Clogging is their official dance. Well, have you ever clogged? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But but here's the here's here's the kicker. Um, this is Kentucky and North Carolina we're talking about, so I'm assuming they mean clogging arteries. <laughs> yes, most likely. Yeah. Delaware's official dance is the Maypole dance. Like, what the hell? Is this a community theater performance of Much Ado About Nothing here? What the hell? <laughs> that is not a dance. That is holding a ribbon and walking around a pole. Not a freaking dance. Okay. So, square dancing. Yes. Some state, there's one, there's, there's a few states out there that have three different state dances. So, but square dancing is, is in the majority of, of these states. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 24 states recognize square dancing in one way or another. Why is that? Well, like literally all things in American society, it's about racism. Okay. Explain. One of the titans of the racism industry is, of course, Mr. Henry Ford. Okay. Didn't Henry know that, Ford. but you could, could kind of be assumed. Oh, well, well, then let me explain that for you. Henry Ford was the perpetually 70-year-old founder of the Ford Motor Company. Like, literally, when Henry Ford was born, he had a 70-year-old man's face. <laughs> just kept this sour face for his entire life uh henry ford is also the man credited with creating or at least perfecting the assembly line he's basically a corporate patron saint yeah. and he really hated blacks and jews well so, as a patron saint of the uh corporate state he would have to wouldn't he yeah yeah, kind of have to. In 1919, living in Dearborn, Michigan, Henry Ford purchased the local Dearborn Independent newspaper for the sole reason of, quote, exposing the Jewish menace in society. <laughs> so literally every issue of the paper was ridiculously anti-Jew and anti-minority. In fact... Henry Ford even got a number of his personal favorite anti-Jewish articles from his newspaper and published them as a book entitled The International Jew. He published it in the early 20s. In fact, the book was such a success that it started getting translated into different languages and started getting passed around the globe. 
In fact, it was even published in Germany in 1922, and future Nazi leader Baldur von Schirach who got 20 years in the Nuremberg trials. The guy was the head of the Hitler youth from 1931 to 1940. He basically said like, yeah, I liked Jews and everything, but then have you read this book from Henry Ford? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Hey, I'm going to love everybody. But once I read this Henry Ford book, I'm like, maybe I should become a Nazi. <laughs> or a Dodge family. <laughs> yeah. Basically, Henry Ford, uh, basically, Henry Ford made me hate Jews, like for real. So Henry Ford hated blacks and Jews. There, there is a line that can be drawn that would link Henry Ford's hatred of minorities in the early 1900s to genocide of Jews in Germany. Like, like there's a line that can be drawn from the Ford Motor Company to, uh, uh, you know, Zyklone B or whatever. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So Henry. Yeah. So Henry Ford. So Henry Ford hated Jews and blacks and just all non-whites. So let's get this racist asshat, put him on hold and go to the early 1900s. Um, an old white guy from where? Denver fucking Colorado. Okay. A guy named Dr. Lloyd Pappy Shaw. First off. Pappy! Ain't no way that anyone with the nickname Pappy isn't racist. No. <laughs> Just as a general rule of thumb. I, I would have like, to agree with that. Right now, everyone loves Tom Hanks, but if he was Tom Pappy Hanks, that man's racist. It'd be an issue. Yeah, it would definitely be an issue. My name is Gandhi, but most people just call me Pappy. Uh, yeah, he's racist. <laughs> so, Pappy Shaw was a legendary educator in Colorado Springs from 1916 all the way to the freaking 50s. Okay. And he was a big fan of, of uh, square dancing in Denver, Colorado. But he noticed that... Um, square dancing callers were all getting old like he's looking around and he's like look at all these square dancers they're all like 60 70 years old and, and, and so all of the square dancers square dance callers okay round your partner side to side like like all of these sort of like hoedown motherfuckers yeah they're all ridiculously old and then there's no younger generation of square dancers out there that are ready to replace these people. So Pappy Shaw's like, oh, wait a second. Um, square dancing could die, you know, <laughs> with with this generation of old people. Not only that, but he, he noticed that square dancing wasn't uniform. There are different dances in different regions of the United States. They do square dancing like this in Arkansas, which is different from what they do in Denver, which is different from what they do in the freaking Appalachian, whatever. Yeah. So Pappy Shaw decided, what I want to do is uh, unify the world of square dancing. I want, I want to get all of these different types of square dancing and just put it into one set of rules of square dancing. And maybe I could get kids and teens into square dancing, you know, get a newer generation of people excited about square dancing. Oh, if only I could find someone to help me with this. Meanwhile, back at the Ford Motor Company, Mr. Henry Ford, who is still writing his racist newspapers, he gets worried. He does. Because yeah, now it starts getting into like the 1920s, the 1930s, and then it's the jazzy 1940s. Uh-oh. And oh no, white people are dancing to colored people's jazz music. We can't have white people listening to jazz, dancing to jazz. That's colored people's music. We need to stop this. <laughs> if only some sort of a white dance that we could use to combat this evil minority music. Hey. So, hey, yeah. So Henry Ford got his massive, crazy-ass amount of cash, his pile of cash. Um, 
<clears throat> um, uh, where, where, there, there I was. I lost Pile my place. Cash. Yeah, and he used it to finance Pappy Shaw's mad quest to spread square dancing across America because Henry Ford saw square dancing in country music. This is a way to cancel out all the minority style music like jazz and rock and roll, whenever that'll be invented. Yeah. There are minority types of music, and the best way to get rid of this minority music is to spread country music and square dancing white music mm-hmm. how can we how can we stop square dancing with a bunch of white people doing the box step oh basically yeah that's legendary. basically yeah so basically country music rose in popularity in the 1930s and 40s and 50s because rich white people were scared of blacks and jews <laughs> So remember that when isn't, you hear music yeah. now. Isn't that just about the, the only way that's what it always is? Yeah. What are we afraid of now? <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, Pappy Shaw's crusade to unify square dancing and spread it to the nation's youth, it became a, na- a nationwide movement thanks to Henry Ford's anti-Jew pro-Nazi money. Pappy Shaw traveled the nation, first documenting the different styles of square dancing, and then he created his own high school square dancing troupe that toured the U.S. in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. He taught square dancing to teachers, and he promoted it for as a good way to keep teenagers clean. Well, and we would be totally for it if it got us out of class. I used yeah. to square dance. You used to square dance? And it's yes. like... Okay, no shame in square dancing. Teens are listening to black people's music, and we can't have that because these black people are horrible. We need to keep these good white kids acting clean. So, if you want to keep your white, if you want to keep your white teens looking their whitest, why not try all new square dancing? And it was promoted. It was promoted as a good, clean, fun way to dance for kids during a specific generation which is why those kids became many of them became teachers and those teachers taught these kids square dancing and then those kids that were taught square dancing some of them became uh uh, kids and then they those some of those kids became teachers and those teachers started teaching square dancing and that is why to this day Kids in high school are taught square dancing. I, I always wondered why we had a fucking square dance in gym class. Yeah. That really yeah. never made any sense. Yeah. In my high school PE class, freshman year, 1991, Deer Valley High School, it was a week of square dancing. Oh, my God. You went to Deer Valley High. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to Deer Valley High. I'm sorry. What? Nothing. What's funny about Deer Valley High? Everything. <laughs> ten four, ten four. <laughs> That's why 60 fucking years after Pappy Shaw's racist crusade, I spent a week learning square dancing. Mm-hmm. How weird is that? And it's, it was because of racism. The worst part about spending a week learning square dancing is the fact that I'm not sure why, but for whatever reason, our PE teacher only used one song. Yeah. And that was, I don't even know who sings this. She's in love with the boy. Trisha Yearwood. Trisha Yearwood? Yeah. Think, that think. sounds 1991 country music. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. I, think that's what it is. I am quoting you. Uh, <laughs> Natasha was quoted as saying that Trisha Yearwood sang She's in Love with the Boy. <laughs> I'm sorry I quoted you. I won't quote you. Uh, uh, Na- me Natasha me may or may not have said it. Shit. Natasha may or may not have said it. Bella has, uh, Eleanor has collapsed on some cardboard on the floor of the living room. I'd like to think because it's cardboard, I'd like to think she's trying to break dance. <laughs> um, it's because I don't want to give her a hot bowl of soup. Oh, okay. I thought it was because she was trying to break dance. You have a really nice butt. But don't quote me on that. This just in. Steve thinks I have a really <gasps> nice butt. I told you not to quote me on that. <laughs> that is old news, though. Yeah, that's really That old was news. off the record. 
Yeah. <laughs> Off the record, on the QT, and very hush, hush. But yeah, we spent a week learning square dancing, but for whatever reason, we were only allowed to square dance to the song She's in Love with the Boy, which may or may not have been by Trisha Yearwood. PE class is like 45 minutes, 50 minutes, 55 minutes long. Imagine 55 minutes of just hearing the same country song over and over again. Why? There are other country songs. (laughs) So just FYI, Square dancing is an anti-minority conspiracy. Grab your partner side to side, then punch that Jew and kick his hide. <laughs> so now... it's good Because Steve know. couldn't say the N-word. Yeah. So now... There are there's a massive square dancing movement. There's all these square dancing clubs and these square dancing organizations, and and they love square dancing. But the thing is that now these groups are like, oh man, yeah, we need to teach people that square dancing is inclusive and fun for everyone. Hey everybody, you should try square dancing. We no longer hate minorities. <laughs> So, so that's why in the 80s and 90s, all these square dancing groups tried so hard to get square dancing to be the official state dance because they're desperate to, to, for PR, basically. Because yeah. all these square dancing organizations now are like, hey, it, just because we like square dancing doesn't mean we're racist. Look, there's two black people right over there. <laughs> You know, you know how people are. Uh, I can't, I can't be racist. One of my best friends is a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. You know, basically that's square dancing. And that's why there's this massive push to make square dancing the state dance of everywhere. Because square dancing groups are struggling to try and get rid of their racist past. Uh, it's all a weird, bizarre conspiracy. A conspiracy. That's all a conspiracy. But the big winner here, the big winner is Minnesota. Yeah. In, ni- in 1992, a state representative said, yes, I would like to put forth a movement that would officially make square dancing the official state dance of the great state of Minnesota. All those in favor say aye. Yeah, we're not fucking doing that. <laughs> uh, no, we're not doing that. Minnesota's official state dance is get the hell out of here. Next. <laughs> so then two years later in 1994, hello, I am the state representative and I would like to put forth a motion that would make square dance. No, we already did this two years ago. Get out of here with your square dancing. Man, they were really pushing for it. Yeah, yeah, they hit him in 92 and then again in 94. And both times Minnesota went, no. Good for them. I don't think so. Our state dance is mind your own freaking business. And that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So good, good for Minnesota. Yes. So that is it. Good for Minnesotans. Yeah. And that is it for Steve's historical approximations this week. Just remember that country music is racist. And if, and, uh, uh, oh, the icky breaky heart, definitely racist. Billy racist Ray are just fucking stupid. It can be two things. Yeah. <laughs> it can be both. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm the one to be sticking up for Billy Ray Cyrus. You know, if it could be two things, I, I, I'm good with that. As long as I can keep hating Billy Ray yeah. Cyrus. You can absolutely keep hating Billy Ray Cyrus. Good, because that is my prayer. But let's be clear that we're talking about square dancing. I'm pretty sure the electric slide is fine. <laughs> Just want to make clear. It's electric. Boogie, yogi yogi. Just yeah. want to make certain that that should be fine. Or what's that one song that that always plays? Oh, at, right. 
No, at like a wedding or like at a Six Flags crisscross. Now slide to the left. Now slide, slide to the right. right. Crisscross. Crisscross. Keep crisscrossing. Nothing but crisscross. I didn't say to stop crisscrossing. Now slide okay. to the right. Uh, uh. Okay, like, what's that song? I'm pretty sure that's fine too, but it might be racist. I don't, I don't know. Crisscross. <laughs> crisscross. You know what? I'm just going to say it's all racist. It's all racist. Yeah. Everything is racist. Everything is racist. The Macarena? Yeah. Macarena's racist. It's all racist. It's just all racist, people. I think it's safer that way. Yeah. yeah. When in doubt, I'm, it's racist. Just to be safe, I'd probably lay off the hand jiving. Yeah. Just until we get this settled. You know? <laughs> just have a hand jive ban. Like, the, like President Trump's travel ban. Let's just have a hand jive ban until we can figure out what's going on here, okay? Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to see. We'll see. We'll see. I, I agree. I agree. Good. Good. And that is it for Steve's historical approximations this week. I hope you have learned. I hope you have learned your lesson, mister. 